Hello everyone, I thought with Halloween rapidly approaching that today we'd discuss some of the darker aspects of the personality um, in fitting with the season. If any of you caught my interview on the news the other day, I was talking a little bit about dark empathy and I thought I might expand on that topic today a little bit more and add in some information about uh, what we would refer to as dark personality traits. So for years, psychologists have been trying to narrow down the list of different character traits into a very fundamental cross-cultural list that um, can be used for personality tests and these sorts of things. And for the most part, they've come down to kind of a, a few basic different ways of listing. Um, and they're pretty accurate cross-culturally. However, in their research, they kept running into some of these darker character traits that didn't really fit in their models of personality. And so what researchers have done is pull these personality traits out from among the more typical ones like introversion, extroversion, those sorts of things, and place them in their own category. Now, the category can be named the dark triad or the dark tetrad, depending on whose research you're looking into. So in the dark triad, we have narcissism, we have psychopathy, and we have Machiavellianism. And then if you're looking into the dark tetrad, that adds sadism to the list. Now, when we're talking about these particular traits, we're talking about the more factual, psychological definition of something like, say, narcissism. We're not talking about the personality disorder or saying someone is a narcissist, though they may be. Narcissism simply is self-interest. And all of us have a degree of narcissism or we wouldn't be able to survive. And so when they, when they mention narcissism, it simply means level of self-interest. The term Machiavellianism refers to the willingness to manipulate other people to get them to do what you want them to do. So you may lie, you may guilt trip, these sorts of things. And psychopathy, most of us are aware of the meaning of that particular word, which basically is lack of empathy and willingness to break societal standards, societal rules. And then, of course, if we add sadism in there, it's a pretty straightforward definition of sadism, which is deriving joy from harming other people. Now, when we look at the dark triad or the dark tetrad, and we consider the idea of dark empathy, psychologists divide empathy into emotional or affective empathy and cognitive empathy. And so a person with emotional or affective empathy can actually experience the emotions that the other person may experience. So for example, secondhand embarrassment, that's something that most of us are aware of. Um, or even, you know, when someone else stubs their toe and you can go, oh, I can almost feel that because you have affect or emotional empathy. Now, cognitive empathy, on the other hand, is the ability to understand what the other person may be feeling, but it is not the ability to actually feel it. And so research has shown that individuals who are um, psychopaths, individuals who have high Machia Machiavellianism, they don't have either kind of empathy. So they don't necessarily understand the traits or the feelings of the other person and they don't feel them either. And so when or those types of traits are being activated, that means they're going to use more um, aggressive forms of attempting to get what they want. So for example, maybe seduction or intimidation. However, when they look into narcissism, people high in narcissism also tend to have a high level of cognitive empathy, but a low level of emotional or aff affective empathy. So a person who's a narcissist or has narcissistic traits that are quite high is able to understand how something might make you feel. And then in turn, they're able to use that to get you to do what they want you to do. 
So there's more subtler forms of manipulation that come with this one because I know that if I speak to you a certain way that I can cause you to feel guilty or if I, you know, blame you for things that you might feel um, like they're your fault um, or if I'm trying to get you to fall in love with me and marry me so I can really possess you at the beginning I might do all kinds of nice things for you because I understand that doing nice things makes you feel good about me and so having cognitive empathy without the affective empathy that's what we would refer to as dark empathy so it's the one piece that can then be used in order to gain what you want from the other person. Whereas for most of us, we have a pretty de um, decent combination of the two, which means that we can comprehend how the other person may feel and we can actually know what it's like to potentially feel that. And that is what stops us a lot of the times from engaging in undesirable behaviors. So I hope that you found that interesting. Um, I'm going to follow up with some videos on some of the more um, darker characters in history because, you know, Halloween time, people are usually thinking that direction and are interested in them. But uh, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat underneath and I will talk to you next time.